Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India boosts spending cuts deficit in $550 billion budget ahead of 2024 election. Pakistan raised Mujahideen and now they are terrorists, admits Interior Minister. And Parents grief for infant, a victim of Afghanistan's deadly winter. And now for all the details. India's government on Wednesday unveiled one of its biggest jumps in capital spending in the past decade in its budget for the coming year and said the fiscal deficit would fall as it tries to create jobs while maintaining financial discipline. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Wednesday unveiled one of the government's biggest jumps in capital spending in the past decade in the budget for the coming year and said the fiscal deficit would fall as it tries to create jobs while maintaining financial discipline. In the last budget ahead of general election in 2024, Sitaraman said, after a subdued period of the pandemic, private investments are growing again, with total spending rising 7.5% to 549.51 billion US dollars. She said that despite a global slowdown, the Indian economy was on the right track. Current year's economic growth is estimated to be at 7%. It is notable that this is the highest among all the major economies. This is in spite of the massive slowdown globally caused by COVID-19 and the war. The Indian economy is therefore on the right track and despite a time of challenges, heading towards a bright future. The key highlights of the budget are allocation of total spending to nearly $550 billion, allocations for rural job guarantee program cut to 600 billion rupees, and the proposal to raise the minimum tax rebate limit to 7 lakh rupees from 5 lakh rupees earlier. The government has also allocated 350 billion rupees for energy transition as it focuses on green hydrogen and other cleaner fuels to meet the country's climate goals. PM Modi in his address hailed the budget and said, the budget will build a strong foundation for building a developed India and will fulfill dreams of the aspirational society. Since taking office in 2014, Modi has ramped up capital spending, including on roads and energy, while wooing investors through lower tax rates and labour reforms, and offering subsidies to poor households. A lack of enough and well-paying jobs has been, however, one of the biggest criticisms of Modi, who is still widely projected to win the next general election. At least two foreign nationals were killed and 19 others were rescued in India's Gulmarg town after a massive avalanche swept through the popular ski resort. Over the past few days, scores of tourists have thronged the scenic town after the region received fresh snowfall. At least two international skiers were killed and 19 others were rescued on Wednesday after an avalanche swept through the popular ski resort town of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. According to local police statement, 21 foreign nationals along with their two guides went to Gulmarg for skiing when the avalanche hit the skiing site, leading to them getting trapped under a layer of snow. An eyewitness said that about 20 feet tall chunk of snow fell on a team of seven, which resulted in the death of two. The police was yet to make the nationalities of the deceased public till the last reports came in. Gulmarg at an altitude of 8,500 feet is a bowl-shaped plateau of a lush green meadow surrounded by thick forest. In winters, the region becomes a popular tourist destination for its picturesque beauty and adventure spots. 
Over the past few days, scores of tourists have thronged the scenic town after the region received fresh snowfall. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah on Tuesday admitted that it was a mistake to create mujahideens in the past to join war with the global force in Afghanistan. Speaking in the debate in the parliament over the deadly Peshawar attack, he said mujahideens which were created by them have now become terrorists and are attacking the country. Days after Pakistan witnessed one of the deadliest attacks on its security forces in Peshawar, country's interior minister Rana Sanaullah admitted it was a collective mistake to raise mujahideen or Islamic guerrilla fighters for war with global forces. Addressing the National Assembly, Sanaullah said Pakistan had created mujahideens and now they have become terrorists. Giving details about the Peshawar attack, he said the explosion happened when a suicide bomber exploded himself in the mosque, killing at least 100 people, mostly police personnel in the fortified city. He expressed fear the death count may increase. However, he assured the House that the political and the military leadership would take the parliament into confidence over the recent wave of terrorism. कोई ज़रूरत नहीं थी मुजाहिदीन तैयार करने की कोई ज़रूरत नहीं थी कि किसी भी जो है वो आलमी ताकत या किसी के भी कहने पे हमें जो है वो उस लड़ाई में जो है वो शामिल होने की इन लोगों को मुजाहिदीन जो है वो हमने खुद बनाया और उसके बाद फिर Pakistan's Defence Minister Khwaja Asif criticised the previous government's decisions to become part of the Afghan Jihad in the 1980s and later the US-led war on terror post 9-11. He said Pakistan itself sowed seeds of terrorism during Afghan war. We were very fond of launching a jihad, Asif added. No group has officially owned the Peshawar attack. But Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah said a breakaway faction of the Pakistani Taliban called Khurasani had claimed responsibility. Pakistan saw as many as 376 terror attacks in the 2022 itself. A majority of them were claimed by banned terror outfits such as TTP, Daesh and the Balochistan Liberation Army. Moving on. Political activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has criticized Pakistan government's recent move to end the subsidy on electricity and impose new tariffs in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. He raised concern that Islamabad does not even consider discussing such policy decisions related to the region with the local representative government. Prominent political activist Amjad Ayu Mirza has slammed the recent decision of Pakistan government to end the subsidy on electricity and impose additional tariffs in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Mirza lamented that the government has made this decision unilaterally and did not even discuss it with the Prime Minister of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. He said the residents were promised 300 megawatt of electricity free but with this decision onwards, they have to pay 22 rupees per unit. Pakistani Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has taken a unilateral decision to cancel the subsidy on electricity that was given to Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir. And this uh, subsidy is not a charity. There are 52 items on which the United Nations has directed Pakistan to give Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir a subsidy. One after the other, they are cancelling those subsidies unilaterally without even discussing it with the POJK government. There has been growing unrest in Pakistan administered Kashmir over rising inflation, and locals claim they are not even provided benefits of hydropower projects in the region. They blame Pakistan assured them of development, but it has only given them hours of load shedding, lack of drinking water, along with turning their roaring rivers into small rivulets or drains. A three-month-old baby boy in Kabul was one of at least 171 people who have died due to the cold weather in Afghanistan in recent weeks. In a bitter freezing snap that has hit just as the country is experiencing a severe humanitarian crisis. With no money to host funeral guests, Amrullah's parents quietly buried him without informing their relatives. 
Amrullah, a three-month-old baby, was one of at least 171 people who have died due to the cold weather in Afghanistan in recent weeks. In a bitter freezing snap that has hit just as the country is experiencing a severe humanitarian crisis. Amrullah's mother, Shamila, clutched and covered the baby who had a cough and congested lungs, but later at midnight, he succumbed to cold. With no money to host funeral guests, Amrullah's parents quietly buried him without informing relatives. Amrullah's father, 40-year-old Naik Mohammed, lost his income a few months ago when health problems stopped his work as a labourer. <laughs> A family friend of Amrullah's parents has given them a basic charcoal heating system to take the edge off the deadly cold. But unable to afford much food other than bread, Shamila is worried about her other children who have heavy cuffs. Hospital wards in the country have been filling up with children suffering from pneumonia as many families like Shamila's face a choice between being able to afford heat or food. The United Nations has said that 28 million Afghans, many of them children, are in need of urgent assistance during the coldest winter in 15 years, which has seen temperatures dip as low as minus 34 degrees. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to a Taliban ban on most female NGO workers, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. In news from Nepal, the suspension of former Nepal cricket team captain Sandeep Lamichane has been lifted by CAN, the Cricket Association of Nepal, after he was granted bail in a rape case. Lamichane was released after posting a bail of 2 million Nepali rupees. The former IPL player was arrested on 6th of October 2022 and spent the rest of the year behind the bars. The 22-year-old has been accused of rape by a 17-year-old girl. Meanwhile, the Attorney General's office on Tuesday challenged the decision to release Lamichane, terming it flawed, and filed a petition with the Supreme Court demanding that he be kept behind bars and prosecuted. The leg spinner was appointed as Nepal cricket team captain in 2021. He has been the face of cricket in Nepal, being the only player from the Himalayan country to feature in prominent 2020 leagues across the world. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's key inflation rate, Colombo Consumer Price Index, eased to 54.2% in January from 57.2% in December. The country's statistics department said on Tuesday, the scums, as the island nation is trying to clinch a 2.9 billion US dollars IMF bailout to tackle its worst financial crisis in 70 years. Sri Lanka's key inflation rate is to 54.2% in January from 57.2% in December, the country's statistics department said on Tuesday. The Colombo Consumer Price Index, CCPI, reflected a 60.1% jump in food prices from a year earlier and a 51% climb in the non-food group, the census and statistics department said in a statement. The island nation of 22 million people, which is trying to clinch a 2.9 billion US dollars IMF bailout, has been struggling with soaring prices for over a year and its worst financial crisis in 70 years. Its central bank held interest rates steady for a third straight meeting last week, as widely expected, saying the prevailing tight monetary stance was crucial to taming still high inflation and restoring economic stability. The Colombo consumer price gauge is closely watched as a lead indicator for broader national prices and shows how inflation is evolving in the biggest city of Colombo. Sri Lanka's national consumer price inflation, which is released with a lag of 21 days every month, is to an annual rate of 59.2% in December from 65% in November. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.